Welcome to the Art of Living Free series with Anthony Szilard. We would love your support to keep these valuable videos and podcasts free for everyone. To make a donation, please visit theartoflivingfree.org. 100% of all proceeds go to nonprofit education programs. Today, Dr. Szilard asks, is it true that leaders inspire their followers on a common vision and then take them there? Successful leaders first inspire their followers on a meaningful vision and then take them there. Is that true? Is it not true? Under what situations might that be true? Part of this is really around uh, around how do leaders inspire followers toward any kind of vision. And, and so there, there are two, two, two forms of that. One is that, uh, one is that the leader sort of declares a vision and then people come on board with it. But what tends to work much better is when leaders create a collective vision with their followers, right? So, but how does that, how does that happen? How does that process take place? So I actually don't think that the, the statement is partially true. It's some, uh, you know, it's partially true. Leaders first inspire their followers on a meaningful vision. It's important that they inspire their followers on a meaningful vision, but that's not the first step. So this, this statement is missing something. What is missing is that successful leaders first define reality and then how their organization is going to change that reality. And because the number one need that followers have is for security. And the world is a crazy place. And now, just like all time, I mean, so, so many people think like right now it's just such an unusual situation with the pandemic and so forth. Um, it is, right? But, uh, you know, and right now times are so uncertain. You know, I hear many people say, that's true, but guess what? All times are uncertain. You know, we're, 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 we've never been in just a, a place where there isn't like, aren't like major challenges. Sometimes are certainly smoother sailing than others. Uh, but there's been a lot, you know, you go back to like the Cuban missile crisis where we were at the brink of, of nuclear war or, you know, even the cold war or just many times when there've been like very, very dangerous situations that somehow we managed to get through and we're in one of those situations. And I, and I think one thing, when you think about the way you're leading your team, you want to think about everyone is trying to interpret and make sense of what's going on in the world. And if you can explain that to them in a simple, clear way, and that's defining reality, then how is your organization going to make an impact on that reality? That is, that is the vision that will inspire people. So I would say uh, the statement should be successful leaders first define reality. Um, you know, they acknowledge an unmet need that their followers are experiencing either, you know, directly or vicariously through others that, that they, that they connect with and relate to. They then create a sense of urgency around, around meeting that need through inspiring their followers on a meaningful vision that targets that need. They then take them there. So there's three steps. First, define reality, acknowledge the need in the environment. Second, create a meaningful vision with your followers. And then three, take them there. So one, one other leadership principle I teach that's related to this is called balance realism with optimism. So if leaders just come out optimistic, like, like that's what the statement is, right? They first inspire followers on a vision. Hey guys, here's these wonderful things we can do. You, don't, you can't do that yet because you don't have them yet. Right? You got to start with realism. Here's what's going on out there. Whatever it is, if it's healthcare, if it's, uh, if it's homelessness, if it's, uh, if it's designing new software, uh, whatever it is, here, here's the need out there. Maybe the need is that, uh, that people are trying to, uh, uh, people are trying to get something done and the, and the existing software out there doesn't enable them to do it. So here's this need or here's this need, like, like uh, homeless people are unable to buy their own homes. They rent and they're never able to exit from poverty because they're always renters. Whatever it is, define reality, describe the situation. And then from there, how is your organization going to change that reality? What is, what is the guiding philosophy vision um, to be able to change the situation? And then here's how we're going to get there. 
that's what in, that's what inspires people and keeps them keeps them going. So when we think about like what motivates people and how leaders sustain the motivation of their followers, uh, there's a story I like where you have um, you have these three men that are that are breaking rocks, and a reporter goes up to them and asks them asks the first first man says what are you what are you doing, and and um, and he says well I'm breaking rocks. And he goes okay. So he goes up to the, you know, he goes up half an hour later to the second man and says, what are you doing? He says, uh, earning enough money to, to, to provide for my family. Okay. Half an hour later, he goes to the next man. What are you doing? He replies, building a cathedral. You know, I get like chills when I share that story because that there is so much power in meaning. When we experience meaning in what we do, it ceases to be a job for many of us. It becomes a career, and it can even become a calling. And whatever it is that we're doing, um, there's. Have you guys ever heard the saying, "The day you find the job you love, is the last day you have to work." You know, it's like it's like do it. Or how about this one? Do what you love, and the money will follow. You know, if you pursue if you pursue the money, the love usually does not follow. You know, so work work is a four letter word. What is it? What is work for you? Is it hell? Is it play? Is it love? Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese poet, once once wrote, work is love made visible. For those of us that have that that have really this have, have experienced this amazing privilege and blessing that we have a calling and we love what we're doing because it's connected with the love we want to express toward humanity and towards our towards the people we share the world with it is you know it's it's a wonderful feeling that that just changes your entire life and very few people have that and and uh you know i think that's why we go into educational programs because we we haven't found it yet and we want to find it um and to do so well that's a whole a whole process there's a number of ways to to go about that um uh, a lot of it is to is to connect with your connect with how you've suffered in your life, connect with how the suffering you've seen of others, and then ask yourself what makes me really uncomfortable with this suffering, my own and or of others. How do I want to change that suffering? Right? There's a saying which is which I have in, in, in an earlier book, which is don't let someone else's suffering spoil your own. Right? I would also say don't let someone else's passion become your own. Because each of us has a unique signature that, that we can, a unique imprint we can make in the world. Kind of our signature, um, our signature values and uh, and offering to the world, and that's what career really is: is trying to discover what that is. When we do that, it becomes much more easy to inspire others. It's like you can always tell. You can always tell when you go and interview for a job: is this leader inspired? You know, the word inspire actually comes from like, like in, like, 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 um, you know, like inwards and spire, it comes from breathe, like respiration, you know, expire, all of this is all around breathing. So inspire is like to breathe in when someone talks and you just like, you miss a breath, like you're breathing in because you're so inspired by what they're sharing. When we can induce that effect in others, then they're going to be much more likely to want to join with us in whatever kind of initiative we're leading. Life offers us many challenges, and theartoflivingfree.org offers new ways of thinking so we can see these challenges from a new angle and overcome them. Whether it's Anthony Szilard's free blog, video or podcast series, his book, Screened In, The Art of Living Free in the Digital Age, or personalized courses, theartoflivingfree.org will help you refine your life vision and then transform it into action. Find out more at theartoflivingfree.org.